head and not the tail. Yeah, we are not afraid. Oh, yeah. We are world changers, mountain movers, devil chasers, fight to conquer us. We shall overcome. Oh, yes, we can. The following program is sponsored by friends and partners of Kingdom Dominion Church of God. Stay tuned for today's message. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We serve an awesome God. We thank him for sparing our lives to be here this morning to lift up his holy name. Uh, bless the Lord, O my soul, Psalm says, and all that's within me, bless his holy name. We serve a God who rule and reign forever and ever, God who loves us, a God who is faithful. And as the songwriter said, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercy I see. All I have needed, thy hand has provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. We give God thanks. Thank you for joining us this morning in our Zoom broadcast, whether you're on Facebook Live, Zoom Live, or, or YouTube Live, we just want to welcome you this morning um, to our service. Um, the men are in charge this morning, and uh, oh, I am excited to know that we still have men in the kingdom of God who are willing to take charge, amen, and step up to the plate and worship their God and lead their family into worship and just glorify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so at this time, I'm going to welcome uh, Minister Willie Harris, our moderator, to come at this time and uh, lead us as we get into worship with, with, um, with our service this morning. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. I'm glad when they said unto me, come and let's go into the house of the Lord. Come. They ain't said, let's go. They said, come and let's go into the house of the Lord. Yes, I was grateful when they said unto me, come into the house of the Lord. 
This is the day the Lord has made. I will praise him. I will praise him like this is my last day to praise him. I will give him all the glory. Yes, I will rejoice him, but I will praise him more than I will rejoice him this morning. Because this is the day the Lord has made. This is the day the Lord has made. This is the day that we will never see again. We will never see this day again. So let's praise God like this is our last day because tomorrow is not promised to us. God told us that tomorrow is not promised. So let's just praise him and exalt his name Hallelujah. on the day. No matter whether you're on Facebook, Zoom, YouTube, wherever you may be, in your living room this morning, your bedroom, wherever you may be, let's just praise the Lord this morning. We're going to get ready to go into our, straight into our program this morning. Reverend Lord Francis is going to be open in prayer this morning if he's online. Reverend Francis. Praise the Lord. Praise Amen. Lord. Praise God. Indeed, I'm glad to be here to worship God and praise God with us today. Could you bow your heads in prayer? Heavenly Father, we give you thanks, God. We thank you for the morning. We thank you for a new day, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to come into your presence, to worship, to praise you, to give you glory, to give you thanks, to give you honor. Holy Spirit, we honor you. We magnify your name. We glorify your name, God. For indeed, you are worthy and there is none like unto you. Heavenly Father, right now we put before you, O God, today's service. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit will begin to move in a mighty way. God, there are people who are listening, who need a word from you. God, we need to hear from you today. Lord, we pray for a blanket covering, oh God, to cover us, shield us, protect us, oh God. Lord Jesus, some of us have been frustrated. The week has passed and we've gone through a lot of turmoil and disappointments, difficulties, challenges. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that as we gather today around your table, that you will provide a meal for us like never before. You will touch us. Bless the moderator. Bless those who are participating in today's service. Bless the speaker, God. We ask God for a move from the Almighty like never before. Holy Spirit, we bind and we tear down every stronghold of the enemy right now. God, be with us now. We glorify your name. We honor you. We praise you. We magnify your name, God. Friend, you are worthy to receive glory, honor, power, and praise. God, remember those who are listening. Remember where they are, whether they're on the road or at home or somewhere, God. Remember them, God. Touch all your people now as we give you all the praise and glory. Speak to us today. Provide a blessing, Lord. Bless the bishop his wife, bless this organization, bless every single one of us, God, as we give you all the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise amen. God. God, we want to give you extra praise on this morning. We want to give you extra thanks, God, because you have kept us through this whole entire pandemic, God. Lord God, we could have been one of those numbers, Lord, but you kept us, you kept your strong arms wrapped around us, Lord. Lord God, just don't let go, God. We don't want to be one of those numbers that's laying in the hospital, Lord God. Lord, someone is calling on your name right now, Lord. I.E., I.E., Lord God. Go into them hospital, Lord God, the nurses' home, Lord God. Touch each and every one that's in them hospital and the nurses' home, Lord. Just lying in the bed, Lord God. They need you right now, Lord. They just need that one little touch from you, Lord. All they need is that little church, Lord, and everything will be all right, Lord. Lord God, we know you are a healer, Lord. You are a savior, our savior, Lord God. Lord God, you can do all things. There's nothing too big for you, Lord. Lord, you can do it right now, Lord God. We know if you did it yesterday, you'll do it again today, Lord God. Lord, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Only you know what's going to happen tomorrow, Lord God. But each and every one of them in them hospital bed, they definitely need you right now, Lord God. Lord God, give them the strength they need to get them out of those beds, Lord God. Lord God, we send a special prayer out to each and every one across this globe, Lord God. Lord, they need you right now, Lord God. Even the White House needs you, Lord God. Step into that White House, Lord God, and let them know that you are in charge of that White House. Not the Republicans, not the Democrats, Lord. You are in charge, Lord. Lord God, just touch each and every one that's in the, that White House, Lord. Lord God, just step in and do what you're going to do, Lord God. Lord God, just go in there and just show out, Lord God. 
Lord God, you're in charge of this service this morning, Lord God. Lord God, stop by here this morning, Lord God. There's someone shouting in this house this morning, Lord God. Stop by here, Lord. Lord God, there's someone praying this morning, Lord God. Lord God, if you can't just stop by here this morning, Lord God. Yes, Lord, I met you when I walked up my door this morning, Lord God. You brought me here safe and sound, Lord God. I know you will take me back safe and sound, Lord God. I just want to thank you on this morning, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Yes, Lord God, stop by here this morning, Lord. Someone is singing your praise this morning, Lord God. Just stop by here, Lord God, and give them the touch that you desire, they desire, Lord. Lord God, we ask all these things in the name of your son, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Oh, God is a good God this morning. He is worthy to be praised. Give him all the glory, all the honor this morning. Uh, I don't know what from your grace and your mercy, Lord God. I don't know where I would I be this morning. I just have to exalt your name, Lord. Lord God, because you have, have been good all week long. You have started to see another brand new week, Lord. A brand new week. You took it through last week, day in and day out. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. You kept us safe, Lord God. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, another three days you kept us safe, Lord God. Keep your arms wrapped around us, Lord. Lord God, we thank you for this day. Brand new week that you have shown us, Lord God. Lord God, we know you'll take us through this week, Lord. Now we're going to go into our scripture reading, which is coming from Matthew 6, 19 through 20, 24. Yeah. <laughs> Ask Deacon Jerome Wright if he can bring that in for us. Yes, yes. Um, oh, um, President, I was, I'm, I'm right here, but I'm driving. So, okay. Are you in the right. park? Yeah, okay. Park? Let me do it. Okay. So, okay. Well, just a little thing. We were taking from Matthew 6, from 19 to 24. Do not store up for yourself treasures and hurt. We are mud and burning, burning, destroyed. Where the teeth break in and steal, but store for yourself treasures in heaven, where much and vermin do not destroy, and where teeth do not break and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he, uh, you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Amen. With the Lord. It is in the Bible before the word. If you are really honored, if you are really blessed, you just say, to my soul, to our dear, you know, we're um, president, one president, Irish, right there. Amen, amen. I like the verse 24. If we could just read that all together, no matter where you are right now, face, Facebook, YouTube, Zoom. Let's read verse 24 together, because, because a lot of people is trying to serve two gods. But when we look at this verse 24, it says, no man, no man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despite the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Because you have a lot of people that try to love money and love God too. Look at verse 24. You cannot love both mammons. God said you only can love him and serve him. If you love the other God, that is not the God that we serve. I love the God that I serve more than anything in this world. I love God more than money more than food. I will give anything to be with my Lord and Savior. Anything. Give me God first, everything else will fall into place. God, God is in control. I love the master that I serve. I love the master that's in control of my life. I love the master that keeps me day in and day out. I love the God that I serve. I don't know about no one else, but I love the God that I serve. I know what he can do for me. He can do for me what no one else can do for me. That's why I love the God I serve. I serve an awesome God, a big God. There's nothing too big for my God. I don't know about you guys, but I know my God is awesome God. He's a big God. He's going to take us right into our praise and worship team. Are we ready to praise and worship? We're going to take this to another level on the praise and worship team. Yeah. 
I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him truly will I trust. I am told that this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and deliver him out of all of his trouble. Hallelujah. Somebody lift your hands wherever you are and just give the King of Kings and the Lords of Lord and healthy praise in here this morning. Hallelujah. We give honor and glory to God. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Can, can I tell you already, Bishop, how real God is? Okay. I was sitting in my seat and it came into my spirit. I did not say it's a revelation. It came into my spirit just to pray right after the praise team come on up here. Wow. And I said, God, how could this be? Bishop Francis, I've already prayed. And here it is. God, allow the moderator to go right into praying for those who are <laughs> laying sick somewhere, Hallelujah. not knowing that God is able to touch them. Hallelujah. I believe in a real God this morning. I believe that the God that I serve is so tangible and so real that he will speak to you at any time. Glory to God. Somebody praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody Glory praise God, God somewhere. Yeah. I'm still going to be in obedience with the spirit. I know you know somebody that lost somebody. I know you know somebody that is grieving. You might not be the one who is grieving right now, but you know somebody that, that, that this pandemic has touched and they're grieving. You know somebody that is questioning God this morning. Won't you stand in the gap for that person? Hallelujah. Father, it's in the name of your son that we lift up those who are grieving this morning. It is in the name of the, your son that we make mention of those who have already put their loved ones to rest and those who are planning to put loved ones to rest. Out there in the world wide web, in every country, in every tongue, in every language, in every nation, there is somebody who is grieving right now. And so I summon you, Holy Ghost, like Bishop Francis said, a blanket covering. I am asking you, oh God, for a blanket touch. While I'm praying individually, I'm asking you for a collective touch for everyone who is hurting, everyone who is mourning, everyone who is grieving at this point. Lord, you're not gone on a journey. You have not forsaken your people. And you're not an unjust God. You do all things and you do all things well. This is the day that you have made. We rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we pray for the Thomas family as they grieve on today that you will touch them right where they're hurting. Oh Lord, we had prayed and asked you for healing. And in healing, you brought us death, a permanent healing, one which the mind and the body cannot conceive, but we thank you anyhow. And we bless you on today. Strengthen your people right now. Oh, we lift up your name and we give you honor and glory in Jesus' name. Praise God. Somebody wave your hands and praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody wave your hands and praise God. Oh, I wish that the musician would praise God with you. Hallelujah. We just want to send up a praise to Almighty God. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Praise the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, yes. Salvation, purchase. 
Can you say it all over again? Yeah. Blessed assurance. We have an assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, Jesus. Oh, what a poor taste of glory divine. Heir of salvation.
of the goodness. Sing that second verse one more time, please. I love you. Come on. I love your Lord. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close. I know I love. I know you as a father. Come on. I know you as a father. I know I'm a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been so still alive this morning because God has been faithful to you hallelujah I heard a song that says you're bigger than what people say oh Jesus you're bigger than what people say you're bigger than what people say you're bigger than what people say Jehovah you're bigger than what people say Bigger than what people say. You're bigger than what people say. You're bigger than what people say. You're bigger than what people say. I hear them talking. I hear them running up the most. But you're bigger than what people say. That's right. Oh, bigger than what people say. Jehovah, you're bigger than what people say. I hear them talking, I hear them running up their mouth, but you're bigger than what people say. You're bigger than what people say. Jehovah, you're bigger than what people say. I hear them talking, I hear them running up their mouth, but you're bigger than what people say. And we have oh, you big, big so why you big so love oh, you big so love oh, you big so say you bigger than what people say 
la obra obliga a no a ti poseer. Ayer en Tarkin, ayer en Rolly Lopez, no, no te obliga a no a ti poseer. Ay, a pizza, 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 ay, a pizza. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Come on, clap your hands out there. We know that the God that we serve, He is bigger than what people say. I said, God is bigger than death this morning, God is bigger than sickness. And so we come. To give God glory. My time is almost expired. Thou my everlasting portion. More than friends or life to me. All along my pilgrim journey. Savior, let me walk with thee. Church of God, say, close to thee, close to thee, close to thee, close to thee, close to thee. all alone. For his worldly pleasure, not for fame, my prayer shall be gladly will I toil and suffer. Moderator is coming close to thee, close to thee, close to thee, close to thee. Praise God. We want to thank the, worship, the praise and worship team for that. Just a close a walk with thee. Who don't want to close a walk with their God? Their God. I want to close a walk with thee. I want to be closer to you, God. Just a little bit closer than I am now. Closer to you, Lord God. Lord God, we want to all be closer to you. A little closer walk, Lord God. Lord, if you lead, we will follow. Lord God, we know there's a narrow road. But if you lead us down that narrow road, we will follow you. We will follow you to the end, Lord God. Lord, you know 
you're in control of this service this morning. I can feel the spirit in this house this morning. The spirit is walking around through this house this morning. No matter whether you're in your living room, your bathroom, or your kitchen this morning, I know as we get ready to cook those rice and beans, the Holy Spirit is in that kitchen this morning. We can feel that, that spirit in that kitchen this morning or that living room, whatever it may be. I'd like to officially welcome each and every one on Facebook, Zoom, YouTube, wherever social media that you might be listening to us on this morning. Kingdom Dominion, the men's service this morning. The men's in charge, yes. We still need the ladies, even though the men's in charge. We cannot do without the ladies with a, a, just a little bit. We need them also. So we're going to get ready to go into our um, orphan time. We have did a little prayer. We have uh, sung a little song. Now we can time for each and every one to watch in now. We're going to call Brother Julian Ivan to get an orphan appeal for us right now. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, my Kingdom Dominion family. Our Lord has been bigger than what people say throughout this pandemic. And I want to thank him for keeping us and guiding us um, throughout this pandemic. And we're surviving. We're surviving. We're blooming and we're growing. Uh, a church without walls. I want to come to you and thank you for your generosity uh, to Kingdom Dominion um, throughout these years. And, um, you know, as Kingdom Dominion continue to push forward and to spread the gospel globally, uh, a church without no walls, we're on all the social media platforms and we're, we're spreading our wings. And we want to thank you. And if you um, look in the chat, you will see in the chat there, I'll post all the information uh, in regards to you giving for all our all our individuals watching on Facebook. It's also in the chat on Facebook for you guys to see there. And there's multiple ways to give into the kingdom of God. You can go to kdcog.com and click on donate. And we, you can donate to the kingdom that way. Uh, if you want to send it to us via Zelle, we have info at kdcog.com as the link for you guys to send in your funds. Cash App, we also take your donations and your offering and your tithes via Cash App. Uh, dollar sign, Pastor Cliff, FTDM, you'll be able to send your funds into us. And if you wanna send us a check, we'll take the check as well. Mail checks to 96 Pleasant Hill Road, Conyers, Georgia, 30012. I want to thank you very much for all your donations thus far, and you have continued to bless the kingdom and bless Kingdom Dominion Church of God as we continue to further our global ministry. Thank you very much, Kingdom Dominionites. Praise God, praise God. Lord God, we want to bless each other one that had to give this morning, Lord God. Bless those who do not have to give, Lord God. Bless them in a way so next time they will have to give, Lord God. It doesn't matter whether it's financial or a job, Lord God. Whatever you may do, Lord God, bless them this morning, Lord God. Look upon them, for Lord God. Lord God, each and every one of us needs you this morning, Lord God. We just need you. We cannot do this without you, Lord God. Lord God, just touch us this morning, Lord God. Lord God, bless those who had to give this morning, Lord God. Lord God, press it down, shake it together, Lord God. Lord God, we know that that you can do all things, Lord God. All things are done through you, Lord God. Lord God, you have the power, Lord God. You have gave us the power also, Lord God, to press it down, Lord God, and we bring it into your storeroom this morning, Lord God, to overwhelm our kingdom this morning, so our kingdom continues the service that we are doing, Lord God. Right now, we're going to ask the, the uh, worship team to come back again and give us a special song on this morning. They rather we do that special song, uh, Brother Sova is standing by for a special prayer for the speaker on this morning. Praise team, are we ready? Suppose we don't meet. Suppose we don't meet. Suppose we don't meet on the judgment day. Oh, what a weeping. Oh, what a wailing. Suppose we don't meet on the judgment Make sure that so we meet. Make sure that so we meet. Make sure that so we meet on the judgment day. Oh, what a weeping and what a waiting. Suppose. 
cause we don't meet on the judgment day. I feel like traveling on. I feel like traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair. Feel like traveling on. I feel like traveling on. I feel like traveling on. Heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. I feel like traveling on. I feel like traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. Praise God. Praise God. I feel like traveling on this morning. Yes, Lord. Bless God. I can feel the spirits in this house this morning. The spirit is here. God said, I will send you the comfort in a time of need. Lord God, I can feel the comfort in this house this morning. The spirit is moving. But we're going to take this to another level. In a few seconds, we're going to bring the bishop. He's going to take it up to another level. Uh, this plane going to take off to about 3,000 feet. Then the Holy Spirit is going to take it over. When the Holy Spirit take it over, you don't know what's going to happen up in 3,000 feet on this plane. Because I know the Holy Spirit is going to take it over. But right now, we're going to bring Brother Sobers and let him do a special prayer for the speaker at this hour. Brother Sobers, are you there? Good morning, good good morning, good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, what a wonderful day. God bless you. Wake us up this morning with a sound mind. Oh, we have to give praise and thanks because the dead cannot praise God. Father Lord, we are here today, my God, Father Lord, in this service, my God. As my bishop, oh God, will come on to bring a word to you. But first, I want to give praise and thanks to you, O God, that the words that he may bring, O God, bring forth, he, it shall be a blessing to our souls, my God. I pray, O God, Father, Lord, that his family shall be blessed going out and blessed coming in. And for those who surrounded him my, this morning, my God, I ask you in the name of Jesus to touch them, O God. Touch uh, uh, Minister Wellington this morning, wherever he may be, my God, his family, my God. I ask you the name of Jesus to touch Brother Wright, O oh God, and Sister Wright this morning. Touch, O oh God, Sister Sobers, O oh God, Mary Brown, O oh Lord. Father Lord, I ask you the name of Jesus to touch Sister Blake, my God. We are the members and those who I did not mention, my God, that are included, O oh, hallelujah. Father Lord, this morning, my God, I ask you to do a new thing. Oh God, in the bishop heart this morning to bring a pathetic word unto you, oh God. Father Lord, so that we were able to, to know who you are this morning, my God. I ask you to cover him with the blood, my God. Wash him and cleanse him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Take away, Father Lord, what's not of you, my God, and give him a clean heart, my God, so that when the words come from his mouth, oh God, we shall seek. Help us, oh God, to overcome our fears and doubt, my God, because we know, Lord, that we are not a fear of, of man, but we are fear of you. And because of you, oh God, we know who you are this morning, my Lord. You are the Lord of Lord and the King of King. You are the great I am that I am. You are the consuming fire that will burn and destroy the oaks. Help us, O oh God, Father Lord, to be vigilant unto you and your words this morning. Let the blood sacrifice him, my God, that he will able to stand before you this morning. In, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. 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 Somebody give God a praise in the house this morning. This is a wonderful day. Has God been faithful to you? Oh, praise God. All my life, I can say truly, not just because of that song, I can truly say God has been faithful all of my life. He has been faithful. He has been good. He has been my provider, my protector, my healer, my deliverer, my closest friend, my strong tower, my rock in a wheel. And God has been there for me. And I'm sure Many of you can say the very same thing this morning. If God has been faithful to you, why don't you clap your hands and give him a praise? Yes. Hallelujah. God has been faithful. 
on Facebook Live, you can send up a praise on Zoom. Send up a praise, send up a symbol, send up a word of praise to our God who has been faithful. Hallelujah. Let me just use this opportunity to welcome every single person that is joining with us this morning in our Zoom worship. God is here. His presence is here because his people are here. I just give God thanks for everyone that has joined to worship with us and to give God all the praise and all the glory. Uh, I want you to um, turn your Bibles to the scripture that was read earlier, Matthew 6, and we're just reading from verse 19 to 21, Matthew chapter 6, and I'm reading, reading it again just for us to, to hear it one more time, I'm reading it from the Amplified Bible this time. I'm reading it from the Amplified Bible. Wherever you are, uh, just get the word. It's time for us to eat from the word of God. The Bible said his word is food to our soul. His word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We cannot survive without the word of God. The spirit man needs to be fed. The spirit man needs to be enlightened by the word of God. Jesus himself said, man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word, every single word that's written is vital for our survival, vital for our spiritual development, vital for our, our, our enrichment. And uh, so let us get to that word, whether you're going to do it on your phone or your Bible or internet, wherever you are. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 21 says, in the Amplified Bible, as we get ready to, to read that in the Amplified Bible, it says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. Jesus gives us the reason why he gives us the command in verse 21. He says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where your treasure is, there your wishes will be also. Where your treasure is, there your desires will be also. Where your treasure is, there is where the center of your Lamb of God. We thank God. God for his word. We pray God will just bless this word to our heart. I pray that God will continue to elevate us as he inspire us with this word and as he give us the truth of his word. In Jesus' name, amen. Today I want to use the theme that's already in the text. I'm not coming with a new theme. The, the, the theme is in the text. Where your treasure is, that is where your heart is. Where your treasure is, where your wishes are, where your desires are, uh, where your treasure is, is where your wishes are going to be. Where your treasure is, is where your desire is going to be. Where your treasure is, is where, is where it's going to be your center of your life. It's going to be your central focus. That's where your passion is going to be. Wherever your treasure is, that's where your passion is. If you want to know where your treasure is, check your passion. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Oh, wherever your treasure is, there your heart will be also. In the Sermon on the Mount that we have been studying for a number of months, Jesus taught his disciples, his listeners, those who are listening, not just his disciples, everyone was listening. He taught them the difference between earthly treasure and heavenly treasure. There is a difference between earthly treasure and heavenly 
treasure. And in this particular text, Jesus emphasized the importance of the heavenly treasures. Hallelujah. How many people have treasures here on earth? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Oh, bless God. Listen to what Jesus said. I'm going to say it to you again. Read it to you again. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth. And when Jesus used that strong phrase, do not, it is very important. You need to pay attention. There is a reason why he says, do not store up treasures on earth where moth or rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. And Jesus no, did not just say do not do something. He gives you a better alternative. Amen? Because whether you like it or not, we're always going to store up something somewhere. Somebody say amen, no? Amen. I remember I, I, um, I remember in the country, I, I always knew where to find my mother's money. I'm going to tell you, but don't tell anybody. I always know where to find my mother's money because she always have it at a certain spot under the mattress. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes. And if you notice nowadays, when they break into people's houses, the first place they check is under the mattress. And sometimes what these people do, because they know that things are going to check under the mattress, what they do, they bore a hole in the side of the mattress and push the money all the way down. But the thief know the little hole you poor. Yeah. <laughs> right. So we all store up treasures. Amen. We all have something that's important to us. Isn't that right? We all have something that means a lot to us. And we store it up. We, we, are, we store it up. We hide it. We, we put it in a safe place. Right? And so Jesus is saying, do not store up for yourself treasures on this earth uh, where moth and rust do destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Uh, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Uh, he said, instead of, um, instead of storing up treasures on this earth, he said, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. Glory to God. Oh, bless uh, the name of whatever we focus on, my brothers and sisters, dictates our action. Whatever is important to us dictates our action. When we focus on earth, success and wealth we will extend our energies we will we will exert all our energies on earthly matters however when we focus on God's priorities when we focus on the things of the kingdom of God when we focus on the word of God when we focus on the commands that God gives our actions will reflect spiritual priorities our actions will reflect divine priorities and our rewards in heaven will last forever somebody praise God hallelujah where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. That's where your passion will be. That's where your energy will focus. Uh, it's not hard to know where people are storing their, some folks are storing their treasures. It's not hard because you hear it in their mouth. Uh, you see it in their actions. Uh, you see it in their behavior. You know what their passion is. Uh, it's all over their phone. Oh, glory to God. Treasures, my brothers and sisters, is anything we value above everything else. And treasures are what motivates us to action. For some, the treasures we store up on earth is money. For others, it's power. Some folks love power. They will do whatever it takes to get that power. 
For some, uh, people, some of us strive for fame. Fame is a treasure that we store up on earth. Some of us uh, love attention. Yes. We love uh, when folks uh, recognize us. Amen. That is what is important to us. And if, if, if we dare not use your title, you get offended. Because that is what is important to you. You spent years studying because you want this title and you want this degree and you want this recognition and that's important to you. Oh, bless God. There are many things in this world, my brothers and sisters, that's vying for control of our heart. Yes. Uh, according to Jesus, uh, determining where our treasure is uh, also determines where our heart is. Glory to God. Uh, wherever our treasure is, uh, that's where our heart is. Whatever we value above everything else, that's where our heart is. Glory to God. Many people claim to look forward to heaven, but their hearts are really not in heaven. Hallelujah. Their hearts are caught up in the cares of this world because that's where their treasure is. Jesus warned us that earthly currency has an expiration date. Oh, well, it may satisfy us temporarily, my brothers and sisters. Uh, the earthly treasures are unstable and they only last for a time. Glory to God. That money in the bank will end. Hallelujah. That money in the bank will run out. Either the money is going to run out or you are going to run away and leave it. I say either the money is going to finish or, or you are going to finish uh, and somebody else is going to use it. Because on that day when we say ashes to ashes or, or say dust to dust, uh, ashes to ashes, uh, you have expired. Uh, and all that money that you have been saving up, uh, I am going to probably get some of it. Hallelujah. To buy some more suits, glory to God. And to pay some tithes and offering. And while I'm doing that, uh, I, I may even use some of it to give to some folks who have a need. Uh, and while I'm doing that, my brothers and sisters, I am storing up treasures in heaven. Hallelujah. Somebody give God a praise. Oh, wherever your treasure is, that is where your heart is. Glory to God. And that's where you're going. Hallelujah. That's where you're heading. That's where your passion is. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Oh, mighty God. If we notice uh, on the magazines that they publish, uh, you notice sometimes you see all different kind of faces uh, on these magazines. You never see the same face uh, over and over. Uh, one person gets famous this month. Uh, another person gets famous another month, uh, another, another year or whatever. And uh, you see different faces on these magazine. Uh, that simply means uh, that you can be famous this month uh, and next month nobody know about you. Nobody care about you. This month you look so good. Uh, oh, you look uh, you have a six pack or you have a uh, the shape of the of the Coca-Cola bottle and everybody is crazy about you. And you are the more you're the most handsome man alive or the most beautiful woman alive. And they want you on their magazines. Uh, it's not because they care about you. They're trying to promote their magazine and make money off you. And you you use that and you get famous. Uh, and next month, all of a sudden you put on 10 pounds uh, and they don't like how you look anymore and you're no longer famous anymore oh bless god the stock market crash uh, this year uh, and maybe last year and some years ago taught us that wealth can quickly lose the wealthy can quickly lose all of it amen Oh, yeah, the wealthy can quickly lose all of it uh, because when you accumulate all that wealth uh, you can't keep it under your mattress sorry when you have millions of dollars you can't hold on to your mattress as a matter of fact, if you put it on your mattress, you won't be able to sleep and you may have to hire security police 24-7. And if you're not careful, some of those police will rob you too. Hallelujah. Because when you have so much money, it's tempting. Everybody wants some of it. Hallelujah. And so you store it up in the stock market so you can be wealthy today and tomorrow the stock market crash and you lose everything. Oh, praise God. Uh, power, prestige, uh, and public approval are limited, my brothers and sisters. They can be gone in an 
Tanta. In an instant, you could be a nobody. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Uh, Jesus himself uh, was an example. Uh, if you remember, the people wanted to make him a king in John 6, verse 15. Uh, and, the, and, next, uh, and, and then the next moment, uh, they were all leaving him, running away and leaving him. Uh, there was another moment when they all said, crucify him. One moment they want to make him a king. The next moment they said, crucify him. You can be famous today and tomorrow everybody turn against you oh bless God wherever your treasure is that's where your heart is my brothers and sisters oh let me remind you of what first Corinthians 7 31 says it says and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it for the present form of this world is passing away can i remind you my brothers and sisters that this present world is passing away it's not going to last forever we're only pilgrims here come on church we're only passing through that's what the bible says our home is in heaven just waiting for us we are just ambassadors passing through and god has blessed us with different things for us to be a blessing for us to be agents of his blessings glory to god Oh, yes. Uh, oh, mighty God. The Bible tells us in Matthew 12, uh, uh, verse 36, that I tell you, on the day of judgment, uh, people will give a count for every careless word they speak. Uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, everything that we do in this present life, uh, we will have to give an account for it. We will have to give an account for it no one is exempt uh, and no excuse will be accepted by god uh, so as we are living here today and we have a chance uh, to store our treasures uh, let's listen to what jesus is saying to us do not store up treasures on this earth hallelujah store your treasures in heaven oh mighty god store your treasures uh, in heaven oh praise the name of jesus uh, we store up treasures in heaven uh, when we make choices on earth uh, that benefits God's kingdom. I said we store up treasures in heaven when we make choices on this earth uh, that benefit God's uh, kingdom. Glory to God. Jesus said that even offering a cup of cool water to a fellow believer is worthy of eternal rewards. Matthew 10 verse 42. It says, and whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he's a disciple. Truly I say to you, he will be by no means lose his reward. So even if you give a cup of water to a child of God or anybody, uh, you have a reward waiting for you. Because anything that you do for the kingdom, uh, you are storing up treasures in heaven. Somebody give God a praise right there. You don't have to be preaching. Uh, you don't have to be laying hands on anybody to heal anybody. Just doing something as simple as giving somebody a cup of water or a, a bottle of water or anything that's good. Uh, you are storing up treasures in heaven. Uh, and in heaven, no, 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 thief, no, no thief can take away your, your reward. No thief can steal your reward in heaven. All those bad-minded folks who don't like you, they can't touch your reward. <laughs> they, can, they, can, they, can, they can affect what you have down here, but they can't touch your reward in heaven. Oh, glory to God. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. In Luke 19, verse 19 to 21, Jesus told a story about a rich man and a beggar. The rich man had invested his life in opulence and pleasure. He had a great life. He cared little for anyone or anything but himself. When he died, the Bible said his riches could not follow him. When they put him in the casket and throw all that dirt over him, they did not even put a dime in the casket. The only suit he had was what they buried him in. Glory to God. He could not carry any of these treasures with him. His life choices had prepared him only for hell. And all the money and prestige he enjoyed on earth counted for nothing. Glory to God. After death, he could have given everything he ever owned for 
a single drop of water, but his treasure had been invested elsewhere. While the man was in hell, hell was so hot, the man became so thirsty and he said to father abraham send 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 lazarus with a, a little cup of water a bottle of water to so come and put a little tip on my tongue it's so it's so hot down here i am so thirsty and um, and uh, and, he, and 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 uh, abraham said no we can't do that because there is a gulf between you and him hallelujah oh glory to god my brothers and sisters it's not a sin to be rich let me put that out there. Nothing is wrong with having wealth. Nothing is wrong with having a lot of money and a number of houses and cars. Absolutely nothing is wrong with that. But it's our passion, hallelujah, that for these things that is serious. It's our passion. It's the love that we have for these material things that is the problem. Wealthy people who consider their riches as belonging to God will use what they have in ways that have eternal significance, church of God. Protecting their own hearts from the love of money. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 6.10, for the love of money is what? The root of all kinds of evil. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many fangs, many troubles, many demons. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So nothing is wrong with having a little money, with having wealth. It's the love for these things that is dangerous. When you love money more than you love God, then if God tell you to give it, you're going to tell him no. Hallelujah. I can't get no amen right now. So. <laughs> I, I hear, I hear, I hear our, 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 our men's fellowship president this morning reminding us that we can't serve two masters. Right? Amen. We have to, we can't love two masters. We can't be in love with two gods. Either we, either we serve God or we serve money, right? Amen. And that seems to suggest that the love of money is so powerful that if you're not careful, you worship the money. You serve the money. You become a slave to the money. And whatever the money tells you to do, you do it. And whatever God tells you to do, you, you, you say to God, sorry God, I can't do it. The money will talk to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody praise God. God tell you to give that sister something because she's in need. And you say, God, I can't do that because my money said no. The money in the bank said, no, she mustn't get nothing. She don't deserve it. Hallelujah. God said, come on, man. Give something into the kingdom so the kingdom can grow. He said, no, God. I'm not, my, I'm not minding that pastor. I don't like him. Hallelujah. So the money is talking to you and God is talking to you. So the man of God said this morning, we can't serve two masters. You have to give up one of them. If God be God, serve him. And if money is God, then go and serve the money. But you, must, you cannot serve two masters, my brothers and my sisters. Because when God speaks, if you love him, you will obey it. Amen? Oh, mighty God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let me get a little further into this before we close off this morning. Wherever your treasure is, my brothers and sisters, that is where your heart is. That's where your passion is. Glory to God. The question some of us may ask is, how do we store up this treasure in heaven? We know how to store it up on earth. I don't have to tell anybody that. As soon as you get your pay, it's gone into the bank. As soon as you see a nice car, you buy it. As soon as you see a nice dress and a nice suit, you buy it. My God, have you seen some of those shoes that people wear? I understand some of those shoes cost $500. Some of them even have $1,000. Mighty God. Have you ever seen some of them? And these people, their looks are 
and their appearance is critical to them. That's what they treasure. Say they will spend a thousand dollars on a suit. They will spend a thousand dollars on a pair of shoes. And they will spend a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars on a nice dress. Because what is important to them is their appearance and their looks. And when they are coming, everybody must know, say, I am coming. This is me. Hallelujah. And that is what you treasure. Hallelujah. But would you give a brother 20 dollars? If Jesus said, give that brother $20 to buy some dinner, would you do it? Hallelujah to God. How do we store up this treasure in heaven, my brothers and sisters? As Jesus told us, store up your treasures in heaven. Store up your treasures in heaven. I am here just to remind you of what Jesus said. I'm not coming with a new message. I'm just here to remind you of the message that Jesus preached. Store up your treasures in heaven. My brothers and sisters, store up your treasures in heaven. Put it on Facebook. Put it on YouTube. Put it on Zoom. Store up your treasures in heaven, brother. Store up your treasures in heaven. You don't know when you're going to drop down and die. You don't know when you're going to pass out and we can't revive you. So store up your treasures in heaven because after you die and on the day of judgment, when Jesus receives you into heaven, your treasures will be there waiting for you. Somebody praise God. Man. I say store up your treasures in heaven. Hallelujah. So how do we do that? I know that's the question you're asking. How do we store up this treasure in heaven? If you give me a few minutes, I will help you to understand that for those of you who don't. The Bible, my brothers and sisters, mentions rewards that await the believer who serves the Lord faithfully in this world. Uh, Matthew 10, 41 says, the one who receives a prophet because he's a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And the one who receives a righteous person because he's a righteous person will receive a righteous person's uh, Rewards. So there are rewards that await the believer who serves the Lord and stores up their treasure in heaven. Whatever you do on earth for the kingdom is what is storing up treasures in heaven for you. Whatever you do for Christ, somebody always say will last, right? It's only what you do for Christ will last, right? Because everything else that you do, the car you buy, the house you buy, the clothes you buy, sooner or later you're going to get rid of them and get new ones, not you? After a while, after about 40 or 50 years, the house is no good. After 10 years or so or 15 years, the car is no good, right? You have to trade it in and you bought it for 40,000. When you go to trade it in, how much they give you now? If you're lucky, if you get a thousand dollars. So your car is depreciating, it's losing value. So Jesus is saying, don't store up all your treasures on earth because what's on earth is losing value. Store it up in heaven because when you store it in heaven, it's appreciated. Everything in heaven appreciates. Glory to God. It never loses value. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, bless God. So how do we store up this treasure in heaven? I know you're, you're there waiting to hear it. I, I know you're there. You're waiting. You're anxious to hear it. And if you give me another minute, I will try to help you to understand it. My brothers and sisters, when we treasure the Lord Jesus above everything else, we're on our way to storing up our treasures in heaven. Somebody praise God right there. And I'm going to say it again so you can put it on Facebook Live. Put it on YouTube and put it on Zoom. When you treasure Jesus above everything else, you're on your way to store up treasures in heaven. Hear me, my brothers and sisters. The issue, the heart of the issue is an issue of the heart. Because if your heart is not in it, you are not going to get involved. If your heart is not in it, you are not going to do it. If you don't love Jesus, you're not going to be a one thing Jesus said. Hallelujah. He said, ah, if you love me, keep my commandment. Jesus tell you how to store the treasure in heaven. But if you don't love him, if, if he's not your number one man, if he's not your number one priority, then you're not going to do anything he says. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
Oh, I just gave you the secret in one sentence. Hallelujah. Oh, when Jesus is our treasure, we will commit all our resources. We will commit our money. We will commit our time. We will commit our talents to the work of the Lord. Hallelujah. I have to say that again because it ran over some folks head. Hallelujah. I said when you commit, uh, uh, when Jesus is our treasure, we will commit all our resources, uh, all our money, all our time, uh, all our talents to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And we will do what Jesus Christ says. And G Jesus is fair and reasonable. You know? He's not going to tell you to give all of the money you have into the kingdom. He will never do that. Well, let me take that back. He could do that. <laughs> oh, praise God. I've heard testimonies. As a matter of fact, there, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a scripture in the Bible where the woman gave all that she had. She never really had much still. <laughs> So I guess what she said, you know what? What I have can't even buy food. So might as well, I just give all of it. But she was storing up treasures in heaven. And then you had those rich folks that came to the service that were giving a whole lot of money you now. But it was nothing compared to what they had. It was a very small amount. And Jesus was saying, look at this. Because Jesus knows everything. He knows how much you have, right? So look at this. The woman gave everything, and these rich folks just give a little, little chops. Just a little chops. These rich folks, them just come to church with a dollar. <laughs> and this woman gave the one dime she had, right? Now all these rich folks that have millions in their account, they come to church, one dollar. <laughs> oh, bless God. Oh, praise God. First uh, Corinthians 10, verse 31. I need to read that for you. It says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So whatever we are doing, my brothers and sisters, whether we are giving, whether we are eating, whether we are sleeping, whether we are using our time, our talents, we do all to glorify God. Because when we do it to glorify God, we are storing up treasures in heaven. Paul encourages servants that God has an eternal reward. For those who are motivated to serve God, whatever you do, my brothers and sisters, uh, do it with all your heart uh, as working for the Lord uh, and not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance uh, from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. So whenever you give your time, whenever you give your wealth, uh, whenever you give your money, uh, whenever you give your talent, uh, you're not doing it for the pastor. You are doing it as unto the Lord uh, and you are storing up treasures in heaven. Somebody better praise God right there. Because all these years that you have been serving your God. And you have been giving to those who are in need. And have been uh, investing in the kingdom. You are storing up treasures in heaven. And some of you are going to be surprised when you see the returns up there. Some of you are going to be surprised. Because you don't understand the power of your investment in the kingdom. You don't understand that it's more powerful than any investment that you make on earth. Because most of the stuff here on earth depreciates. But in heaven, everything appreciates. Hallelujah. Oh, bless God. When we live sacrificially for Jesus' sake, or serving by serving the body of Christ, we store up treasures in heaven. Hallelujah. Ah, ah, glory to God. Oh, even small acts of service do not go unnoticed by God. Remember what I read earlier, that anyone who gives a cup of water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly I tell you the person will certainly not lose their reward. God does not leave leave anything that you do, any good that you do unturned. He, do, he does not ignore any acts of goodness in the kingdom, no matter how small it is. 
no matter how insignificant you think it is, uh, even if you're cleaning the church, uh, even if you open the door for somebody to come in, even if you say, how you doing today, my brother? God bless you. Let me pray for you. Hallelujah. Oh, let me, let, me, let me lay hands on you and pray for you and agree with you. Anything you do to advance the kingdom, you are storing up treasures in heaven. Somebody praise God with me, no man. Oh, bless God. Hallelujah. I want you to ask them a question on Facebook Live and Zoom and YouTube. Where are you storing your treasures? Ask them, man. Where do you have your treasures stored? Mm. Oh, bless God. Because if you store your treasures on earth, they are depreciating. Because by the time you get to your grave, nothing will work, nothing. <laughs> No wonder the no wonder the uh, the, 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 um, the, the writer of Ecclesiastes says, "Vanity of vanity, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. All this wealth, all this good looks, all this nice suit, all this clothes and this nice shoes, uh, all this all this wealth, all this talent, uh, all this gift. Uh, if you don't use it for the king." it's all depreciating and of no use uh, because when we say dust to dust uh, and ashes to ashes everything go right back to zero and the only thing that awaits you is the reward in heaven the, the, the treasures that you have been storing in heaven no star that, that, have been, that have been appreciating that's the only thing that have any use to you my God Glory to God. I wish somebody would get this message uh, in their spirit. Uh, if you get this message in your spirit, uh, your attitude must change. Yes. By the time you leave here today, you're going to have a new outlook on life. Uh, you're going to have a new outlook on how you give. Uh, a new outlook on how you treat people. A new outlook on how you treat your family, your spouse. Uh, hallelujah to God. Oh, bless God. Hallelujah. Mm. somebody bless the name of Jesus hallelujah glory to God some folks my brothers and sisters have some visible gifts right the first Corinthians 12 tell you of these great gifts such as teaching right singing playing instruments and uh, it's good, it's great to have these gifts that are so visible. And everybody can see that you can sing, you can preach, you can teach, you can prophesy. Everybody can see that you have the gift of tongues. Everybody can see that you have this talent. Amen. But we have to be careful how we use these talents because uh, we don't want to use them to our own glory. Amen. Oh, late praise God. Those who use their talents or spiritual gifts uh, uh, for their own glory are not storing up treasures in heaven. But when we use it to glorify God, hallelujah, when we use it to exalt the name of you, when our heart is right, hallelujah, because guess what? We may not, we are not going to stay here and judge anybody and say you're not using your gift right. You know if you're using it right. Because the Bible tells us, judge not that he be not judged. But the same way you judge somebody, you're going to be judged the same way. So we're not here to judge anybody. We are here to encourage you that as you use the gifting that God has given to you, that you will use it with the right attitude, with the right heart. Hallelujah. Make sure your heart is, make sure you're not doing it for the wrong mode, with the wrong motive. Make sure you're doing it to win souls for the kingdom, to glorify God, to edify the body of Christ. Make sure you're using it to bring glory to God and not to yourself. Hallelujah. Because let me remind you that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and the world and they that dwell therein. Every gift that you have belong to God. Hallelujah. And when you get into that grave and we say ashes to ashes and dust to dust, all your giftings, all your skills gone right back to zero. My God, I hope I'm helping somebody here today. 
What I'm trying to say is that uh, we have to be careful how we use our resources in the kingdom. Not to glorify ourselves, but to glorify God. Because when we glorify God, my brothers and sisters, we are storing up treasures in heaven. Hallelujah. You have been singing for 40 years. You have been preaching for 40 years. You have been testifying and witnessing for 50 years. Have you been storing up treasures in heaven? If you have, my God, you are a millionaire. Maybe a billionaire, maybe a trillionaire. I don't know what it is. But if you have been doing it uh, to show how powerful and how anointed you are, you have the wrong motive, my brothers and sisters. I'm here to set the record straight. Uh, ah, if your motive is wrong, uh, you need to get it right today. Uh, get your motive right so that when you minister, when you sing, when you pray, oh my God, when you, when you lay hands, uh, it's for the right reason. And you can store up your treasures in heaven. Uh, so when God come, he can say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I'm wrapping up. Hallelujah. Somebody give God a praise. I hope we are evaluating ourselves at this time. Oh, praise God. And I, I'm hearing a song in my spirit. With holy nothing. I'm hearing it. I surrender all to thee. Yeah, that's the right pitch. The Lord will be faithful to reward those of us. For the service we give to him. Watch this. The service we are giving is to the Lord. Oh my God. When we give to somebody in need, uh, we are actually giving it to the Lord. He said in his word, as much as you do it to one of these, you're doing it unto me. So when I come back, I can see I was hungry and you fed me. I was naked, you gave me some clothes. I was I was without a place to live and you helped me. Oh, bless God. Somebody give God a praise. Wherever your treasure is, my brothers and sisters, that is where your heart is. Where is your treasure? Tell me where your treasure is and I'll tell you where your heart is. Show me where you store your treasures and I'll show you where you're going to spend your eternity. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Mm. Mighty God. The rich young man loved his money more than God. I'm going to give you one last story here. The Bible says in Matthew 19 verse 16 that a man came to him saying, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? Look what Jesus said to the man. Why do you ask me what, about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you would enter into eternal life, keep the commandments. The man said, oh, you know what? I have been doing a good job. I've kept all of them. No fornication, no adultery, no lying, no stealing. I, I have it all well. You know what Jesus said to the man? Sell all that you have and give to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven was the man happy about this church of god the man went away sad the bible said the issue wasn't that the young man was rich but that he treasured his riches and did not treasure what he could have in christ he treasured his riches more than the command that jesus gave to him jesus told the man to sell his possession and give to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. Ah, then come follow me. The young man left sad, the Bible said. Because he was very rich. He chose this world's treasure. And so did not lay up treasures in heaven. He was unwilling to make Jesus his treasure. Ah, he was unwilling to make Jesus his treasure. The young man was very religious. But Jesus exposed his heart of greed. Ah, the young man was very religious. He, was, uh, uh, he followed the commandments of the Ten, the Ten Commandments. But he 
had a spirit of greed. He was selfish. He had all this wealth, but refused to use it to benefit the kingdom, to bless those in the kingdom. And so he walked away sad. I hear the word of God say, so what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? The treasures, my brothers and sisters, that await the child of God will far outweigh any trouble. The, the, the treasures that await us, my brothers and sisters, will far outweigh any un inconvenience, any material inconvenience or financial inconvenience. The treasure that await us uh, will far outweigh any persecution that we go through. We can serve the Lord wholeheartedly, knowing that God is the one keeping score, and his reward will be, will be abundantly sure. We can serve the Lord knowing that our investment in the kingdom uh, is secure. Our investment in the kingdom is appreciating. And one of these days, my brothers and sisters, one of these days uh, we shall stand before the Lord and he will say to us well done thou good and faithful servant uh, you have been faithful about few things uh, I'm going to make you rule over many things uh, this is all the investment you made on earth uh, uh, you are you are ready to reap uh, uh, the, the, the investments that you have made on earth uh, you have stored up many treasures in heaven hallelujah oh glory to God where are you storing your treasures? Where have you stored your treasures? We're closing. But can I ask you again? Where are you storing your treasures? Are you storing it on earth? Or are you storing it in heaven? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, withholding nothing. I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Can we say that? Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Say it with me. I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you. Withholding Withholding nothing, withholding nothing, withholding nothing, I give myself away, oh, give myself away, so you can use me. I give myself away. Oh, yes, Lord. I give myself away so you can use me. Listen, my life is not my own. To you, I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. We're going to recommit ourselves to the Lord right now. Come on. Life is not my own. To you I belong. Yes, Lord. Lord, I give myself, I give myself to you. I give myself away.
telling you, I give myself one more time. Give myself away. Oh, give myself away. So you can bring down that music a little bit for me. As we close, I just want to reach out to someone. You have never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. I want to remind you, if you don't, if you already know, and just tell you if you don't know, that God so loved the world, John 3, verse 16, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus is a treasure that God released into the earth so that all of us can receive eternal life. And if Jesus becomes our treasure, then we begin to store up treasures in heaven, right? So today I want to invite you to accept Jesus Christ as your treasure as your treasure here on earth and turn your life over to him he said if we confess our sins he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness it is simple to accept this treasure he said uh, in Matthew 3 uh, 6 33 seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. If you make Jesus your treasure, you don't have to worry about clothes. You don't have to worry about food. You don't have to worry about money. You don't have to worry about fame. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus became famous. And in one day, he lost that fame. And they said, crucify him. So nothing that happened to you is new. It has happened to Jesus. Glory to God. But once you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you become famous because now your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And when Jesus come, he's going to announce it to the entire world and say, this is my dearly beloved servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I'm going to make you ruler over many things. Come and get your reward. I'm here to encourage somebody to make Jesus your treasure. Make Jesus your treasure. Make Jesus your treasure. If he becomes your treasure, there is nothing on this earth uh, that he will withhold from you. Because if you seek him first, everything else will be added to your life. So right now I want you to pray this prayer if you don't know Jesus. I want you to pray this prayer. Lord, I acknowledge you as my Lord and my Savior, Lord. Ah, I thank you for going to the cross. I thank you, Lord, for dying for my sins. I thank you, God, for the price that you paid, uh, the price to, for my sins. Oh, I acknowledge you died on the cross, was buried in the tomb, rose from the dead lord and then you ascended to the father even now you are at the right hand of the father making intercession for all of us oh just pray and ask god to forgive you lord forgive me of all my sins i acknowledge i'm a sinner that has wandered far away from God. But right now I'm coming home. I'm a backslider. But right now I'm coming home. Uh, I have put everything else before you, God. But I'm coming home to you now. You are the only treasure I have now. And if I have you, Lord, I have everything. If I have you, Jesus, then you will add everything else to my life. And so I surrender all to you now, Jesus. I surrender all. Here I am, Lord Jesus. Take my life. Take my hands. I give myself to you. Use me as your wish. Oh, cleanse me of all iniquity. I acknowledge that you are my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, if you pray that simple prayer, 
you have now been ushered into the kingdom of God. Jesus is now your treasure. And hallelujah. Now you can start storing up treasures in heaven by obeying the word of God, by loving your enemies, by loving those who are around you, by caring for your family, caring for the brothers, caring for the sisters, obeying the word of God, uh, using your gifts to the glory of God, using your time to the glory of God, spending time in his presence, spending time on your knees uh, and worshiping your God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here I am. Here I am. Here I stand. Let's stand together. Lord, my life, we're closing, is in your hand. Lord, I'm longing to see your desire revealed in me. Let us all sing it from our heart. I give myself away. Everybody, let me hear you say, give myself away so you can use me. Give myself away, yeah. Oh, give myself away so you. I like the second verse of this song. Listen. Take my heart come on tell him take my life as a living sacrifice all my dreams all my dreams all my plans Lord I place them Lord I place them in your Help me somebody give myself away. Oh, give myself away so you can use me. Give myself away. Oh, oh. give myself away. Watch this. My life is not my own. To you I belong. Oh, I give myself. I give myself. Hold on right there. Hold on right there. You see? You see, when we get that revelation that our life does not belong to us. You see, when we get that revelation, it's amazing how stubborn the human heart is. It's amazing how stubborn we are. It's amazing because God has been telling us over and over, the earth belongs to me. The world belongs to me. You belong to me. Everything you have belongs to me. All you have to do is obey my word. Do what I tell you and everything is going to be all right. My life is not my own. Hear this. You Yes, sir. I give myself. I give myself. What is right? What is right? What is right? I say that again. When you get that revelation that our life belongs to God, you see, some of us are living as if we run things. What was wrong with us? When are we gonna understand that our life belongs to? Listen, my life is not my own. To you I belong, yes. I give myself, I give myself to you. My life, my life, my life, my life is not my own. To you I belong, yeah. Oh, I give myself. I pull it one more time, one more time. Something just drop in my spirit. God is going to test some of us to see if we really trust him he's probably going to tell some of us look that last money you have in the bank account you can't pay all of the bill give it to that sister next door 
Give it to that brother in Jamaica. Give it to that sister in Jamaica that have a need. Give him all of it. And then just worship me and watch me turn things around for you. He's going to test us to see if we really trust him. That's what he said to the rich young ruler. He said, sell all that you have and give to the poor. And then come follow me. Come and worship me. Come and magnify me. Because I, God, can give you back everything that you gave away. Because I own everything. Listen, I say, my life is not my own. To you I belong. Oh, I give myself. I give myself to you. We got to quit. I feel like continuing, but we have to quit. The Lord bless you, my brothers and sisters. But before I pronounce the blessing, I pray that every person who hears this message will truly surrender it all to Jesus. We will not just sing the song, but the song will become reality. I pray that everyone who hears this message will truly make Jesus the treasure of your life. I pray that you will make Jesus your treasure. I pray that he will become your priority. I pray that the kingdom of God will become number one in your life. I pray that Jesus will become number one and you love him so much that you will obey every word, every command. He said, do not store up treasures in earth, but store your treasure in heaven. Give it to God. Obey the word of God and watch God work. My life is not my own. To you I belong. Oh, I give myself. I give myself. Hold on a little bit. I see I was closing, right? No, I'm really closing. Because there, there are some of us that hear this message even right now. And we are still struggling, holding on to the stuff, the material stuff that God has blessed us with. The same stuff that God said belonged to me. You, it, it, never, it never belonged to you. The problem is we are, we are taking ownership. And now we want to dictate to God how his stuff is used how his stuff is managed and God is saying until you let go of my stuff and do as I tell you you're not going to be blessed and you're going to continue to store up treasure on the earth and when you die you're going to have nothing up there to receive because you refuse to obey my word so hear me, hear me, hear me oh my life is not my own to you Oh, I give myself, I give myself to you. One more time and then we do the benediction. Come on. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and lift up his countenance upon you. The Lord enrich you. Bless your going out. Bless your coming in. Bless you in the city. Bless you in the street. I decree and declare that everyone at the sound of my voice will make Jesus your treasure. When you truly make Jesus your treasure, your attitude will change. Your mentality will change. Your love for people will change. Your love for the things of God will change. Your attitude and behavior in the kingdom of God will change. Your love of money will change. Your love of clothes and shoes and house and land and your job will change. When you make Jesus your treasure, everything will change. And you will not be the same in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. In Jesus' name. Oh, yeah. My life is not my own. To you I belong, yeah. I give myself, give myself to you. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I 
I keep myself with the scissors. <laughs> oh, 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 my life is not my own. Thank you. 